Your Life, America's best-loved program. Our principal subject has not heard the opening music nor the introduction of our show tonight, but what I say next, she will hear. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to meet a great lady from the mountain country of Kentucky, Mrs. Alice Lloyd. And here to guide her through an inspiring half hour is our host, Mr. Ralph Edwards. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hello, Ms. Lloyd. How do you do? What a pleasure to see you. Do you mind if I sit over there by... I know. I wish you would. Thank you. I, I haven't sat next to a pretty girl since uh, oh, breakfast this morning, you know, <laughs> with my wife. My goodness, it's just so nice to meet you. Uh, I wonder, Mrs. Lloyd, have you ever heard of a television program called This Is Your Life? Yes. You've heard of it? I've heard of it. But you've never seen it, have no. you? No. Well, then, uh, you have a pretty good idea, I think. What's in store for you and for our viewers when I say Mrs. Alice Lloyd of Caney Creek Community Center at Pippa Pass, Kentucky, tonight, This Is Your Life. Wow. <laughs> why, why? <laughs> oh, wonderful. We'll have some fun, right? Go so through some years together. See, it says right there, Mrs. Alice Lloyd, this is your life. This is not just an interview as you were led to believe. That's what I was told. Oh, those scamps, who told you this was an interview? Well, I didn't know. <laughs> well, it's going to be sort of an interview, but with a lot of wonderful things attached to it. We want to relive with you a chapter in American history a chapter you helped write. Now, this is the first time you've left the mountains of eastern Kentucky in uh, 25 years. 25, I guess. Yes. Well, I'm sure uh, most of you will remember that famous motion picture about a beloved school teacher, Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Well, tonight we have a real Mrs. Chips and a true life story of how a frail woman alone in a mountain wilderness brought light and love to a people cut off from the outside world. And that woman is you, Mrs. Alice Lloyd of Pippa Pass, Kentucky. Well, I'm looking forward to this, I'll tell you that. We're ready to start on our journey into the past. Are you ready, Ms. Lloyd? Yes. All right, then. This is your life, Alice Lloyd of Pippa Pass, Kentucky. I'm going down the road feeling bad. Yes, I'm going down the road feeling bad. The year 1916. Well, yeah. You're 40 years old. And by horse and buggy, you and your mother have come to Knott County in the wild mountains of eastern Kentucky. Where did you come from, Mrs. Lloyd? Came from Boston. Yes, the cradle of American culture. And now you find yourself in a lost land, yes, bypassed that's right. <laughs> by civilization. Uh, what were the people there like at this time in 1916? When we came? Yes, ma'am. Why, they were cut off. They didn't know. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any idea of anything. They couldn't read and write. Or... Suspicious of strangers? Yes, and suspicious of strangers. What kind of cabins did they live in, Miss Lloyd? A one room, log cabins, without any windows. Floors? And, and no earth floors. Yes. How far behind the times would you say these people were here in 1916? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe 200 years? 200 years, I should think. You had been a successful newspaper woman in Boston. Yes. What, what brought you to this then forsaken place? Well, I was, uh, it was cold in Boston, and, and I was always uh, interested in missionary work, and so they got the place for me in, down in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And in and, spite of... And in spite of everything, well, I took it. Yes. Uh, in spite, I was going to say, in spite of your attack of spinal meningitis, yes, uh, you yes, were... Yes, I was... To carry I've always on, been with. sick. You and... Uh, well, nobody would know it, the way you... <laughs> the way your well, life shines down, forth. You, know. you certainly carried on. We're going to see about that, too. You and your husband agree to part so he can pursue his career in Boston. Yes. Sick, almost penniless since your father's death, you and your mother move your few possessions into this... This uh, sagging cabin. Sagging cabin, yes. Has left you, and then, then the first revelation comes to you. A small mountain girl comes by, and wide-eyed, she looks at your horse and buggy, at your worn city clothes, and what did she say to you, Miss Lloyd? Oh, she said, here's a princess. And what... I where she got hold of that. <laughs> well, you probably looked like one to I her. What did this make you think of your own troubles? No, it made you forget it. <laughs> Small in comparison, Yes, eh? small in comparison. You probably felt that you could share the knowledge that you had with these people. And then next comes a visit 
that changes your destiny. A mountain man walks barefoot for miles to see you. His yes. name is Abisha, Abisha Johnson. Johnson. What did Baisha say to you? Uh, he came in, he, he was over 50 years old and never had a pair of shoes on. His feet were made all callous. Yes. And he came in to see if we, the foreign women, uh, could hit, come up into his desolation and bring book learning mm -hmm. to his people. And he would build you a cabin. And he'd build us a cabin and give us a strip of his land. And you feel your heart stir with a great yes, desire to so bridge we, across 200 we backward went, years. And went up there and crawled in. Yes. Into his hole, into his log cabin. And you started to lift the mountain and people up to up learning. Then, yes. By spring, you've moved to the new cabin, as you say, on Caney Creek. In letters yes. to friends of your college days in Boston, you write of your hopes to build a school. Yes, I had 40 I remember that first letter of yours, Alice. It sure took me back to the days when you and I were girls together at Radcliffe College. Well, you say, who's that? We're going to find out. This is the way this is your life works, you see. People from your past come My in. My goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> I won't expect you to recognize that voice, Mrs. Lloyd. It's been some 60 years since you two have seen each other. A new record, I think, for I reunions. I guess that's Dix. Well, what do you know? Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you were housemates, as she calls it, at Radcliffe College in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1896 from her home now in Pacific Palisades, California. Yes. Here is your friend, Mrs. Beulah Bix Flebby. Yes. Here she is, right here. Sixty isn't years of catching up to, to Why, do. Isn't that lovely? What did Mrs. Lloyd write about in those early letters, Ms. Flebby? She wrote about the challenge she'd found in those mountains. I think this was the way you put it, Alice. You said the leaders are here in these starved hills. They must be found and given a chance. Mm -hmm. And many That's of happy. you sent those letters on to others, Ms. Flebby, didn't we you? We passed the word along. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was a privilege to share in Alice's work. Mm -hmm. And all your friends were mighty proud well, to have the chance. Well, isn't it nice to see you? Why? <laughs> I'd say it's nice. <laughs> it's proud. Wonderful. Proud to send money and supplies to help start that first grand school of yours. Yes. God love you. Thank you, Mrs. Beulah Bix Flebby, one of the very first to believe in Alice Lloyd's dream. You'll oh, see each yes. other at the party after the show, you it see. It's only 60 years this time. No, it won't. In the valley, the valley so low. 1917. You and your mother are in the new cabin that Baish provided, the first cabin in your Caney Creek area to have windows, I think. But yes. some folks don't want any windows of glass or learning opened in Caney Creek. Uh, you were even shot at, weren't you? Yes, uh, several times. Where were you when a bullet came crashing through your cabin window? I was sitting there. At the typewriter? It came right straight through, right out over my head. You were. You were brave enough and wise enough to ignore the shot and go oh, right on yes. typing your letters. Oh, sure. The men of my clan took care of the ones who shot up the window. We invited them to move on at point of guns. Well, you should know that voice, do you, Miss Lloyd? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, was it Commodore? He's a man. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Commodore <laughs> He's a member of one of the first mountain families to stand by your side. Oh, surely he is. Here from Pippa Pass, Kentucky, is Mr. Commodore Sloan. Here he is, right here. Well, we do with you for years. I didn't know that. I got a new voice. You're surprised to see him way out here, I'll bet, in Hollywood. Hey. My goodness. Oh, well. you, you got the parents together, didn't you, Mr. Sloan, so Mrs. Lloyd could talk to them about the first hey, school? Yes, they had a pretty hard time of it, too. Yes, Mrs. Sir. Lloyd, you know, you promised to raise the money if we'd build the building when the... Thanking, yes, yes but yes. before the meeting ends, three promises are exacted of you, Mrs. Lloyd. Now, what were they, Mr. Sloan? Well, she promised not to mix in her politics. In your or politics? Interfere with her religion, in her religion. Yes. Or meddle with her moonshine. Moon with your moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Commodore Sloan. Thank you. <laughs> You'll see her a little later. <laughs> Bobolink sings on the tree. On the knoll, red clover is growing, Mill May. 1918 now. You'd given your word that somehow you'd raise the money for the new school, Mrs. Lloyd. 
How, how did you do it? I wrote 40 letters to 40 friends. Is that so? And in the meantime... Up, mean... uh, up in New England. Up in New England? Yes. Uh, and the money began to come in. Yes. It was Wellesley, Wellesley College girls, a lot of them, weren't there? Yes, in this particular Ragley, case? Wellesley and Ragley. In the meantime, where did you first open school? In your own uh, cabin, wasn't Yes, it? yes. We had the school was right in the cabin. Yes. That's the only place we had to have it. Yeah. They and call that the... the school. Yes, ma'am. Finally, the new school is completed. Yes. A miracle to mountain eyes with window glass all around its sides. This is fine for the children, but their elders need a community center, you feel. Now, how did you get the funds for this project, Ms. Lloyd? I got them from my own... Solicitation on the typewriter. Again on the typewriter. Yes. And the Wellesley girls and the Radcliffe yes. and Smith and all that. The night that building opened will never be forgotten in the hills. A hundred or more folks gathered outside. Yes, Some of the men <laughs> had their guns. Yes, they and uh, one of your standbys in this particular <coughs> crisis was your good friend, Mr. Sam Allen, from Pippa Pass, Kentucky. Here's Sam <laughs> Allen. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Here, you just, you just uh, set a spell here, Mr. Well, Allen. Them, like... Just having a good time. Sure, yeah. just like you're back in Pippa Pass uh, yes, here. Huh? How was yes, your trip sir. out? All right? Everything? All right. Good. Yes, now, the folks good. wouldn't go inside this new recreation hall, uh, Mr. Allen. Why wouldn't they? Well, they, they were afraid of some drums of sitting under the floor. We had drums gas of what? In them, gas, gasoline. Uh, oil. gasoline drums. Gasoline oil. For, for lighting, what? For, for lamps. Oh, we didn't have any lights. You know. And oh. that's when we didn't have any lights. Yeah. They whispered and talked and pointed at them, and, and whenever they opened up, and there one of them never come in. Is that so? They were afraid of the tanks yes, underneath sir. the yes. building that yes. fed the lights. Oh, well, yes. uh, you asked one of the women in the crowd uh, why they wouldn't come inside, yes. didn't you, Ms. Lloyd? Yes. And, and they said on account of those, they called them, bo what they call them, Sam? They called them bombs. 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 Yeah, there's bombs. war going on there. Yeah, war going on. They thought yeah. you were going to uh, uh, blow the up the place. Germany, so we're yeah. blow them up. Yeah. Some of you men had to Bomb move those up. tanks before people would go yes, in for sir. the meeting, didn't yes. you, Sam? Yes, sir. Roll them out in the creek. I rolled them out in the creek. Didn't you, Sam? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir, for coming and for telling us this bit about this wonderful lady, Ms. Lloyd. You'll see her later at the party, Sam Allen. Yes, thank sir. you. <laughs> Tell her goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, now, are you enjoying this, Ms. Lloyd? Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying this? Yes. You, you, Who else are you going to bring over? What? Who else is going to come here? Who else are we going to bring over? Well, I don't know. We, we got half a Pippa Pass there now, haven't we? <laughs> well, in a moment, Mrs. Lloyd, we'll learn how the Mountaineers gave up guns for books and uh, uh, their moonshine stills for plows, all because you and the children led the way. In the meanwhile, you rest a moment, will you? Back now to This Is Your Life, Mrs. Alice Lloyd of Pippa Pass, Kentucky, a great woman who brought civilization to an entire region of backwoods America. You gotta walk that lonesome valley You gotta go there by yourself Through all these early years, your mother is an ever-present help to you, especially in handling your mail, isn't she? Postmistress when we founded the post office. At Pippa Pass. Yes. Is that so? Yes. Though she now lies buried on the hillside yes. above the school, her spirit lives on for oh, you it still and does your for students. All, all the mountain people. Yes. In 1919, those letters you write ask for more than money. What you need are teachers. Yes, we, that's what we need. We just couldn't resist Alice Lloyd's burning vision. I had planned only to visit Caney Creek, but when I saw it with my own eyes, I knew I had to stay. Whose voice, Mrs. Lloyd? June Buchanan. A graduate of Syracuse University and postgraduate of Wellesley College. She's given 35 years of her life to the Caney schools. Here from Caney Creek is your Dean of Women, June Buchanan. Miss Buchanan, here she is. Well, it wasn't all teaching when you and the other teachers first came, was it, June Buchanan? Well, no, Mrs. Lloyd taught us to go to the mountain homes, you know, yes. and persuade the children uh, to come to school. It was like just uh, persuading uh, little wild animals, you know, just yes. to be your friend. And one time, Ruth Tuttle was bathing a little girl. You remember it, Mrs. Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And when she'd finished uh, bathing Lizzie, uh, Lizzie said, I smell just like a blossom. Oh. <laughs> and then she hurried to say, 
Well, I was bathed once before. <laughs> and Ruth said, you were? Why, when? She said, once of a summer's evening. Oh. <laughs> and when you got them to school, Miss Buchanan? Oh, we uh, gave them shoes and clothing and food when we had it. Thank you, and thank you for your part in this wonderful life. June Buchanan. <laughs> I wish I was a son of Papa. I wish I was a son of Papa. 1922, mm -hmm. as you had hoped, leaders are developing in your grade school. So what was the next step in your plan after the grade school? The high school. Mm -hmm. To build a high school. Build a high school. Hearing about the big difference on Caney Creek, mountain men from other sections in the hills, miles away, walk over to hint that uh, they want schools too. Oh. Mrs. Lloyd was smart enough not to force learning on anyone. She waited until they asked for it. And then she sent her best pupils on marching crusades into these other communities. You'll know that voice, Ms. Lloyd. Now county attorney for Knott County and law graduate of Kentucky University, one of the barefoot boys who came to you and... That isn't Dan, Martin. Yes, it is, whom you <laughs> trained to be a leader. Here from Hindman, Kentucky is Dan Martin. Here he is. <laughs> He's the culprit, eh? Yeah, oh, my. Uh, why did... Uh, draw up the chair, too, Dan. It's just behind you there, and we'll sit down here. Why did Mrs. Lloyd send you children to the other settlements instead of going herself, Mr. Martin? Well, Ralph, uh, Mrs. Lloyd knew that they would listen to us because we were their own kind. I see. And uh, we put on toothbrushing drills, and we uh, gave them an American flag, and we taught them how to salute that flag. And we made, uh, gave recitations and made speeches. And Ralph, we told them that they were living in the dark ages and they must wake up. Yeah. What was the result of these Caney Crusades, Miss Lloyd? When the boys got and the girls got through marching to the school, they usually ended up by building a school in that oh, community. Oh, yes, they did, in that community it developed. Showed the very essence yes. of your plan uh, at parents, work now. The, the children themselves are leading the way to yes. a better future. Thank you, Mr. Dan Martin. Thank you. <laughs> On my way, I'll wake up Jacob, days are breaking, I'm on my way. 1923 now, mm -hmm. on the same hillside where your first shack stood, mm -hmm. Caney Junior College opens its doors. The frail little lady who drove a buggy from Boston to Caney Creek, Kentucky, is seeing her dream come true. What is your one and only ironclad rule for admission to the college, Mrs. Lloyd? A character. Yes. An ability to and learn. An ability to learn. Yeah. Intelligence and character. Caney College becomes your final testing place for future leaders. Yes. For future moral and intelligent leaders. At the pleas of my mother, I rode a mule over the hills <laughs> to enter Caney School. <laughs> I had no thought of college, and I had a lot to live down. <laughs> well, you seem to recognize that voice. Yes, sir. Another brilliant graduate of Caney Junior College, he went on to get his M.D. degree from Louisville Medical School and returned to heal the sick in his home mountains. From Wheelwright, Kentucky, here is Dr. Russell Hall. Dr. Hall. Come on, sit down, Dr. Hall. You say you had a past to live down when you first came to Caney Creek, Dr. Hall. Yes, Ralph, I did. Uh, five of my friends and I were victims of ignorance and illiteracy. And crime was the only outlet that we knew for energies. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mrs. Lloyd and her school saved me. What of your five friends, Doctor? One was sent to prison for life. Four are dead in mountain feuds and gunfights. You rise to be student leader at Caney College, Dr. Hall. You put down the last gunfighting around Caney Creek. How did he do that, Mrs. Lloyd? <laughs> 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 With his own gun that he wasn't supposed to have. Oh, dear. Really? <laughs> Did Mrs. Uh, he, uh, the, bunch, the gang, this tough gang, came yes. over and uh, Dr. Hall went and got the gun and shot the hat off the gang leader, yes, I understand. Yes, he did. Did Mrs. Lloyd reprimand you, Dr. Hall? Yes, uh, we had a strict no-gun rule at Keeney. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you were abiding by it. All right. <laughs> she sent me home for the weekend. <laughs> But later, you gave me a scholarship, Mrs. Lloyd, and I was able to go on to the university. And I'm grateful. Well, well. Thank you for being here, Dr. Russell Hall. In this 10-year span, the human dividends you had counted on, Mrs. Lloyd, begin to pay off. 
The spreading buildings of Caney Community Center are monuments to your vision. We carry your vision to other uh, valleys, Mrs. Lloyd, and work every day for the betterment of our people. Tell us whose voice that is, Ms. Lloyd, can you? From Caney Schooling, she went on to graduate in education at Ohio State University. Oh, that's Alice Sloan. Here from Cordia, Kentucky, is Alice Sloan. Here she is. <laughs> well, she's known them all 100% tonight. Tell us what's been done for the region around Cordia, Kentucky, Miss Sloan. Well, we have tried to follow Mrs. Lloyd's leadership, and we have built the Lots Creek Community School. Well, now, you Caney graduates could go anywhere and be successful. Why do you stay in the mountains, Miss Sloan? We have given to Mrs. Lloyd a pledge. When we have gained our own education, we will return there and settle in the mountains of the highlands, yes. of the, the south. Yes. In other words, give the children the opportunity. That's all we, you all, That's all they need, just an opportunity. They'll do the rest. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Lloyd oh. children. Thank you, Miss Alice Sloan. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going down the road to Yes, that one I'm candle is lighted from another, so the light of your leadership, mm -hmm. Alice Lloyd, spreads to the far corners of the Kentucky mountains. The Caney Roll Call already includes 10 doctors, 10 lawyers, 15 engineers, 4 ministers, 5 farm agents, 7 nurses, 105 school principals, and 1,125 teachers. For 40 years, you've toiled in your tiny little cabin office, never accepting a penny in salary and wearing only the same simple uniform your girl students wear. Yet you have lifted an entire region of America out of darkness and made it a part of the forward march of American progress. This is your life. This is Alice Lloyd of Pippa Pass, Kentucky. Now in a moment, a word about a future we all can share in giving you. Thank you very much, Bob Warren. We're all just enjoying our get-together here. My goodness, right after the show, Mrs. Lloyd, Hazel Bishop is having a dinner in your honor at the Knickerbocker Hotel here in Hollywood, where all your out-of-town friends have been staying. A little get-together so you can all talk. Now, we know how important visual education has become, so uh, to help you carry on your work at Cheney Creek Center, Hazel Bishop has for you this 16-millimeter uh, 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 Bell & Howell movie camera and a generous supply of films. Of course, you'll receive a sound film of tonight's program and a Bell & Howell sound projector with which oh, to, to show wonderful. it on at Caney Creek. Now, you've taught your students uh, to have uh, aspiration as high as the mountains and faith as firm as the rock. Those are your words. That's so, Hazel Bishop has asked Marshall Jewelers of New York City to design three bronze plaques bearing that motto, and they'll be prominently placed in the Caney Grade School, High School, and Caney Junior College. Oh, isn't that wonderful? The schools you built. Now, Mrs. Lloyd, I know there's only one great concern in your heart. What will happen to the Caney schools there in Pippa Pass, Kentucky, when you can no longer carry on? Now, you have no endowments, no government grants. For 40 years, your letters have raised every penny the schools have received. After a paralyzing stroke, you prayed to God that he would restore movement to only one finger so that you could continue to type your letters. You did regain the use of one hand with which you've been carrying on. Now, I feel certain America wants to share your determination so that your work may continue. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep Mrs. Lloyd's great dream alive. Let's guarantee its future tonight. Now, how many of you in our vast audience will put a dollar bill in an envelope right now or a check for whatever amount you feel you can afford and mail it to, now here's the address, Alice Lloyd, Pippa Pass, Kentucky. Now, if you do this now, you'll be helping more mountain boys and girls to become leaders for their region and assure them their only chance for higher education in that area. So reach into your heart and your purse, send your contribution to Alice Lloyd, Pippa Pass, Kentucky. Don't put it off. Do it right now, and we'll give you a report next week. This is your life, Mrs. Alice Lloyd, a true representative of the millions of school teachers everywhere who have inspired and enriched the lives of all of us. God bless you. Our guests fly into Hollywood by TWA, Trans World Airlines, who now fly the newest and most luxurious airplane in the skies. Fly the finest. Fly TWA Super G Constellation. See you again next week, everybody. When this is your life brings you who? Well, tune in and find out. See you next week. Don't forget Pippa Pass, Kentucky. Good night. This is your life was brought to you tonight by Hazel Bishop. What?